Okay, so this will be sort of a general introduction to these related rates problems that we'll be looking at in section 4.2 of the textbook for Math 1560, Calculus 1, at U of L for fall 2017. Um, this will be kind of a, a fairly quick overview because the only way to really get the hang of these related rate problems to kind of get a feel for what's going on is just to sit down and do some examples. So we, we've got some examples coming down the pipeline. Um, once we've gone through kind of the general setup of what we want to do. Um, so what are these related rates problems? Related rate problems are, are going to be these problems where you've got two or more variables. They're related by some kind of equation. We saw in the previous one we had this equation that related the length of a man's shadow to his position relative to a lamppost. And then you want to know how some of those variables are changing. Right? If you know how one of them is changing, you want to know how the change to that variable affects changes to the other variable. And and generally what you're looking at when you're doing these problems is you're thinking about things that are changing in time, right? And so things are changing with respect to time. All right, in, in the in the lamppost example, the man was walking away from the lamppost and so his distance is increasing at a constant rate. And so as as he walks away, you have the rate at which that distance is increasing and and you have the relationship between his distance from the lamppost and the length of his shadow and so by using implicit differentiation you're going to be able to figure out the rate at which the length of his shadow is changing in terms of the rate at which his position is changing as well as the actual values of his position of uh, the length of the shadow um, and one of the things that you have to be careful about when you're doing these related rates problems, one of the kind of the things that you have to get good at when you're solving these is understanding when you set your variables equal to a constant and when you leave them as variables, right? Which ones are kind of fixed for the entire problem, which ones are not? Because we're going to be taking a derivative. And if you set things equal to a constant before taking a derivative, well, that's going to give you a very different result than if you leave that variable until after the derivative has been applied. Okay. So here are some more related rates examples. And so following the general problem solving strategy, you might want to draw a picture in each case. Right. So in the first one, well, I mean, the first one, maybe the picture isn't entirely necessary. You've got yourself a sphere. There's our sphere, here's the center, um, and we know the rate at which the radius is changing. And the way you would solve this one is, well, you need to remember the formula for the volume, right? At which rate is the volume changing when the radius is 5 centimeters? Um, so you need to remember that the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And by the way, in case you're worried, um, most of these kind of geometric formulas, I'm not going to assume that you learned them all in, in high school or even in grade school, even if you maybe were supposed to learn them there. Um, there's a few I'll expect you to remember. I expect that you know how to get the area of a triangle. I expect you know the Pythagorean theorem. Um, area of a circle, area of a rectangle, some of these basic ones. Volume formulas, I won't necessarily assume that you know your volume formulas. Okay, um, So you get your volume formula and then you take the derivative. But remember that you're taking the derivative of both sides with respect to not r, but with respect to t, because r is changing with respect to t. And so the derivative, so dv dt, that's what you're interested in, the rate at which the volume is changing is, so we do the derivative with first with respect to r, Okay, we get 4 pi r squared, but then remember chain rule or implicit differentiation, however you want to think about it, says once you've done the derivative with respect to r, you need to multiply by the derivative of r with respect to t. Right? So you take that derivative, notice we didn't put r equal to 5 right at the beginning, even though that was a piece of information that we were given, because if I put r equal to 5, the right hand side would have just been a constant, derivative would have been 0. Now is where I put r equals 5, and I'm also given the rate at which r is changing, which is 1, right? And I plug those numbers in, and then I get that my dv dt is going to be, if I plug those numbers in, I get 100 pi uh, cubic centimeters per 
minute. Okay, so that's a pretty simple problem. I'm not going to actually solve all of these, but that's a basic setup, right? Um, the next one here, ladder against a wall. That's a pretty standard one. Here's your wall. Here's the ground. Here's your ladder, right? And what do we know in this case? Well, we know the length of the ladder is 13. We know the length of the ladder is not going to change, right? The ladder is fixed in length. It's not going to suddenly get longer or shorter. I mean, maybe, I, I guess it could be like a telescoping ladder. But we're going to assume that the length of the ladder is fixed. And we look at what we're interested in the problem. And we are interested in, well, we're given the rate at which this quantity that I've labeled as x is changing, right? We're told how fast the bottom of the ladder is being pulled away from the wall. And we're interested in how fast the top of the ladder is dropping. So we're interested in how fast y is changing, right? Well, of course, I mean, assuming that this wall was installed properly, we can, we can say that's probably a right angle. And so this time you've got Pythagoras. x squared plus y squared equals 13 squared. Um, and again, you take the derivative of both sides with respect to t, keeping in mind that x and y, we're thinking of x and y as being both variables of t. So here I get the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. I have to multiply by dx dt. Derivative of y squared is 2y, and I have to multiply by dy dt. The right-hand side is a constant, so there I just get 0. Right Now, I plug in my values. Right, I'm given x, I'm given, well, I'm not given y, but I can figure out y from the Pythagorean theorem. And, and so I plug in x, I plug in y, I plug in dx dt, and I can solve for dy dt, which is the quantity I'm interested in. Okay. There's one more just for you to think about, um, a revolving lighthouse. I'm not going to draw the diagram. I'll let you think about that one. And we'll, uh, we'll probably come to that example um, maybe in class. Okay, so in the next few videos, we're actually going to work through a couple of related rate examples. And of course, we're going to also do some more of these examples in class.